chastening that drives me to prayer. Thus, she exposed her inner feelings. Now, let's continue in these brief moments that remain to show you the inside of her heart and the feelings late in life. The candle dimmed, and with the descent of man, she wrote to a family member, I think it to be very interesting, but that I shall dislike it very much as again putting God further off. Well, thus we look into the heart of the candle and the life of Emma Darwin. Henrietta relates her father's death and her mother's response. He died peacefully at half past three on the 19th of April. My mother was wonderfully calm for the very first and perfect, uh, from the very first and perfectly natural. She came down to the drawing room to tea and let herself be amused at some little thing and smiled, almost laughed for a moment as she would on any other day to us who knew how she'd lived in her life, completely faithful to him, compassionate toward him, how she had shared almost every moment as it passed. Her calmness and self-possession seemed wonderful then and are wonderful now to look back upon. It is of note that when Charles Darwin, in other words, there was a sense of relief when Charles died and Emma again had her life. When his statue was unveiled, she did not attend. In the books that I read, volumes one and two, the notations and at the same time the response and the handwriting of Emma herself, she was again reading Paradise Regained. She was reading Balfour, a tremendous apologist who wrote that the nature of evolution discards the purpose of life and the purpose of planet Earth. And the nature of evolution removes hope for mankind. At the same time, he said that the Creator has ordained the function of life and the features of life are all self-evident. And Emma Darwin wrote that she agreed with him. And then, it is very interesting, she wrote, she read the Confessions of Rousseau. And in his confessions, he admitted that he thought his life would be gentle, meaningful, and Christian conduct, but he had got caught up with some scientific observations and with Voltaire in opposition to the things of God, and his life had tremendous conflict. And Emma Darwin read every word of his confessions. Finally, in the final years of reflection and emotional anguish, we can see that even while the children were young, as William admitted the son, one of the sons, there was an air of agony about the home. I outlined a series of thoughts that take place in the minds of those who adopt evolutionary concept, those who've been exposed to concept of creation. And Charles Darwin was the model there's resentment toward persons held or viewed as responsible for suffering or loss, and Charles certainly held that. A distrust of God, appointment of self as controller, a disturbing sense of chaos, an overwhelming fear, entrenched phobias, and Charles Darwin led the field in that particular mode of thought. Emma Darwin's emotions were, of course, dimmed by the long 88 years of her life. Every day having a self-inflicted husband to be cared for, and his thoughts being opposed to hers, yet she was loyal to him. Candle in the night is flickering, but still alive. I expect to see Emma Darwin in heaven. Now that brings me to say, are you going to meet us there? Emma Darwin readily admitted that the Bible was a revelation and that Jesus Christ was the author of our redemption. Now, she was not permitted to live out that Christianity as fully as she would desire, 
Would you like to know that Redeemer? Would you pray this simple prayer with me? Just pray this prayer. Dear God, I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I need you. I open my heart to you as those through the centuries have done when realizing that you were their only hope. Come into my heart right now and save me, and I will live for you with all my heart. If you prayed that prayer, there's a welcome committee in heaven, and I think Emma is there. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas.